he beat me tonight. But uh, I'm 28. This is my first long loss in the division. You know, trust me when I say I'm not going anywhere. I am fortunate enough that I didn't leave the octagon with any injuries, so I look to go back in there and get back to work. The opening round, it looked like it was your round until you got caught right at the very end. Can you talk about how the fight was playing out and kind of what was going through your head? Like, hey, this is working. Hey, I can get this guy. What, what was it? Yeah, I think I surprised him. I think I surprised him with my striking. I wasn't in awe of his striking. I, uh, I was very confident in my own, and I was, getting, I was having great success with my own. Honest to God, you put two of the best strikers in the world together, that's what happens. Someone's going to get caught. And unfortunately, tonight it was me. And last thing for me, Rob, of course, he's got this undefeated record. He's such a unique fighter. Um, what do you think it's going to take to beat Adesanya, whether it be you or, or anybody else? I mean, what's it going to take to, to finally hand that guy his first L? I'd like to see on another night us go at it again, you know, because I, I think I can do that. I th Honest to God, I think I... And that's what's so disappointing, I guess, is that I feel that I can beat him. I have the skill sets to beat him. But we, we clashed heads and I came off second best. You know, I got caught. And all hats off to him. You know, he's a great striker and congratulations. But um, like I said, I'm going nowhere. I'm still one of the best fighters in the world. And I've always claimed that title as one of the best in the world. When you're fighting at this high caliber, at this level, Every fight is, is, is on the line, you know, it's a tightrope. That's why a lot of people, a lot of the fans don't realise that we're walking a tightrope out there and everybody can beat anybody. And tonight it wasn't my night, but tomorrow might be. Did you give any thought, people wondered beforehand, uh, can you go in there and wrestle out of Sonya? That's one of the things people still wonder about him is, is can he stand up to somebody who can bring a good wrestling attack? Did you have that as part of the game plan? Like, hey, maybe look for a takedown if it's there? Definitely. I work my, my wrestling religiously. Uh, I, I think <laughs> I think there's a, a misconception that if I have good defensive wrestling, I don't have good of offensive wrestling. But <laughs> that's not true. I, I, I practice all wrestling. So, um, um, you know, it, it was, it's in my arsenal. I just felt like I didn't need it. Like I said, I was having success with the strikes. And, uh, you know, I, I was doing well until I wasn't. <laughs> that's, just, that's just how it happens. Bro, congratulations on the big win. Now that you've had a few moments to sort of let it all settle in, how does it feel to be uh, the UFC middleweight champion? Feels like I'm still lucid dreaming, so... You might see me do weird things just to see if I'm dreaming, but yeah. He was, he was doing the right moves, but there was no feeling behind it. So I saw everything coming. He hit me a few times, but like, I, I don't like getting hit because not that I'm a bitch or I'm not tough. I am, but I just, it's not smart. But um, yeah, I just showed you guys I can take it and give it as well, apparently, because I have no knockout power and I got pillow hands. Boo -hoo. Just last one, uh, obviously you had that moment with Paul Acosta afterwards. Oh my uh, bitch. You, is, is he definitely the next? Because you've talked about John Jones, we'll me, see. and when when could we see that fight potentially? Mm, nothing, nothing set in stone. I'm just feeling it. But I, I, I like that fight because the, the the casuals they're dumb. They see a beefed up beefcake like that and think, oh, that's the guy. I'm still all hype, by the way. I'm still all hype. Don't worry. I'm just the hype train. Um, yeah. So they'll see that and think that's the guy. That's the guy. They just want to see me lose, but they're gonna be waiting for a long time. Israel, I want to ask you about the motivation for that entrance. I mean, as you said, you know, it, it, it's going to bring on haters. There's no question about it. It's also giving you something else to think about and worry about other than, you know, a championship fight. I told you, I'm, I'm a dancer. I'm, I'm, I'm an entertainer. Like, I don't have to worry about it. I, we came up with that on Wednesday. I tried to do it at the Silver Fight in February, and the UFC were like, no, we can't have that. I was like, oh, fuck you then. And then this fight, this is my show. I'm headlining this bitch. So I was like, no, I'm going to do it my way or no way. Like, who else on this kind of stage? is gonna do that before they go and whoop some ass you know it's I showed you guys if I could sing trust me Justin Bieber wouldn't even have a job but you know <laughs> you don't want to hear me sing yeah. The end of round one, I think it was a little bit confusing for some people because it was so loud, we couldn't really hear a, a bell or a horn or anything. Did you know what was happening in round one? Did you think the I fight was over? I thought, I thought it was over for a split second. The referee jumped in. I thought it was over because I saw his eyes slow. Like, I saw it happen, and I was like, oh, shit. But I, uh, next time, I'm not going to do that. I held my fist up. 
that's stupid. I should have punched him till the referee actually jumped on him. Um, but yeah, I guess the ref saved him in that one. Uh, but maybe it was the end of the round. I don't know. I have to watch the tape again and properly assess it. And as you were celebrating, it looked like you scaled the fence. I know you said your options are open right now, but it looked like you had a message for Paulo Costa. Um, what was said there, and, and and why take that moment to address him? I mean, rather than just enjoy it yourself. And I enjoyed it myself. I definitely enjoyed it. But, you know, uh, it sells the next fight. It sells the next fight a little bit. But at the same time, he's a bitch, and he's my bitch. And I want to make him my bitch, so that's why I did what I did. You talked before this fight about envisioning it, seeing it before it happens, and then when it happens, it's like a memory. Is this what you saw? Deja vu. Yesterday evening, I came here with my crew, and we rehearsed uh, the entrance, and I did it probably about four times or five times, and I did the whole walkout, and I visualized everything, and I did the whole prep point thing, and I stepped in the cage, and I claimed the space, and I did that about four or five times, and I also did the win, the victory, like just visualizing it, and I imagined the whole place lit up with people and loud cheerings and boos and people by the side what they're saying to you and just practicing it and amazingly when I got to the prep point again before the walkout it just felt even more deja there's levels to this shit man it just felt like man I just did the shit yesterday, which I did. So I was so relaxed. You saw me doing the Carlton when he, when, his, when he was coming out. That was a nice song. I like that track. I was relaxed, and I could just see he was too tense. But some people like to be that way when they fight. That's cool. I just like to flow. I like to have fun with it. Ever since they fucked me up on EA Sports and made my body like Chad Mendes. <laughs> I've never touched that game. I've never. They, you need to get me in the studio, do the proper scan, get my proper question mark kicks and everything so I don't fuck with that game. All I do is play it in real life. He grazed my lip once. He whizzed past a few times, but I always established my distance. So I never felt in danger. I never felt in danger. And I said, leading up to this fight, fear. Fear is not real. Danger is real. And I'm a dangerous man. The question is, yeah. your decision making for the next fight will next come fight. down to legacy. Nah, look, I, I'm looking at or making money. The division. Nah, it's fuck money. Money will come. I don't chase money. Money chase me. It's about legacy. It's about moments. It's about, it's about being an icon. You know, I'll do what I do, and the money will flow. I never ever I'm doing this game. I never did it for the money. Trust me. We're gonna talk. But I never did it for the money. I'm doing this for legacy. I showed you guys tonight. I can do things that no one else has ever done from the walkout to the fight itself it was perfect for me and my team and yeah I'm not doing this for the money alone I love the money don't get me wrong the money love me but legacy history Backstage, I was so calm. I was like, why do I feel this calm? Even Dan was so relaxed, you know? I was like, fuck, should I be this relaxed? But I think we, I just used my, my energy properly. I used my chakra properly, and I was able to just control it and channel it at the right moment, which was in the cage. Do you pick Africa or do you pick New Zealand? What do you mean? Well, where would you fight next? Where right now? Oh, definitely New Zealand. Oh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. You're trying to be that guy. Um, first of all, the, uh, what was I trying to say? For me, the UFC Africa has to take some time. It's not going to be next year. It's going to take some time because even right now, I wouldn't. Honestly, it would have to either be somewhere like Morocco because the, the leadership and the corruption where I'm from, people will try. It will be too it'll be too much, you know? Like, there's just too many red tapes to get through. You know, when I went back there, I saw there's so much fucked up shit happening up in the in, in, in the politics and whatnot. I don't want to get too much into it. But Are you the biggest star in the sport right now? What do you think? It's subjective. I can't say that about myself. It's subjective. You might not like me to think I am, but yeah, if you want to say that, go ahead. Uh, I mean, forgot. Paulo Costa is a tougher challenge for you than Rob Whitaker, or do you think? Fuck Rob? no. Okay. I just honestly, like I say, like I came from when I was. That's why Anderson Silva really changed my mentality about martial arts. Jackie Chan first did, then Anderson Silva, because I had the idea. I think it's just something that's been infused through Hollywood that you gotta be this jacked Rambo motherfucker to be a fighter and be a tough guy because that's what you see in movies that's what you grow up watching so everyone still sees that and look at me and, oh he's so skinny bro he's so I'm gonna break his face bro I'm gonna break him he got no power bro well I don't need power everyone has power I have precision 
uh, there's a quote I mean, it's harder to wake up in the morning when you silk and sleep sheets <laughs> silk sheets sorry um don't ask me for shit i'm broke i got no money all my money's just tied up in investments so i need to eat i need to pay bills so i gotta fight again just finally do you expect rob to be able to fight his way back into a rematch i situation? told him i told him in the octagon i said uh, i said i'll see him again definitely like he's, he'll definitely work his way up and he said probably in two fights i'll see you again hard to say but would you think he's uh, two seconds hold up two seconds please um, just it's my show i can do what i want <laughs> i just have to my cousin is calling from nigeria right now say hello from me olumide sugar what's your happen <laughs> it's my guy. Hey, why we lay? Why we lay? You're on TV now, Joe. <laughs>